Welcome to Bamford Rose and another question of the week. This week's question of the week is buying second-hand parts for your Aston. Is it a good idea? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. I'll cover some examples in a bit. But I can see why the thought of buying second-hand parts is attractive because Aston Martin's parts prices are ridiculously expensive. And if you've got a car that needs a few parts, you know, maybe it's a bit of a doer upper, it's a bit of a project car, then if buying new, then the parts price bill can turn astronomical very quickly. One reason why servicing properly each year is an important idea because then you can spread the cost of repairs over a period of time and after that period of time where everything that was needed has been repaired, evolved or maintained, then you should just be able to ride the wave of a few years of easy servicing. Sometimes, especially in the current situation, we're forced to buy second hand. This is because Aston Martin are on back order of some parts. So for a simple seal, pair of brake pads, whatever it was, if you didn't want the car off the road waiting for Aston Martin to get their act together and stock the parts, and the second hand part is indeed an option you might consider. So the advice here is when the part in question is okay to be bought second hand, it's because its function or condition can be gauged, can be understood from the pictures that you see in the advert. And you're not leaving to chance that when you receive your second hand part through the post, that it's just, just as broke as the part that you take off the car. So let's start with this Aston Martin DB9 rear back box for £499. Well, those back boxes retail for about £1,750 plus the VAT. So that's actually quite a good price. And if you can see that the bypass valves are intact, freed up and working, then there's little else that can go wrong with that silencer. So for £499, that's a perfectly reasonable buy. Next, we come on to this steering rack at £790. Well, they retail for about £1,850. Now, we don't know if it's been in an impact and the track rod ends have been squished in. We don't know if the pump has suffered a failure and that debris has gone to the rack, but it's quite a saving over new. And if you could see pictures of the car that it came out of before it was broken and the car was maybe they've got the video of the engine running and the car is on its wheels, it hasn't had a smack, then that would probably be an OK bet to buy that steering rack and you come out the other end okay. Next up, convertible roof module for a DB9 at £350. Well, these are only £550 new, and you've got no idea if, as soon as you plug that into your DB9, that your dash goes haywire, because that roof module is just as bust as the one that's currently on your car. I mean, this is the other big advantage with buying new. You get 12 months warranty with the part if it's too highly priced, because the new component is only 550 quid. And as we know, we've got no way of knowing if that is gonna actually work. Next, we've got some Aston Martin suspension arms and uprights. I mean, these are taken off because the bushes fail. Um, we can't zoom in on that and, and check them out. I mean, that, those are just components that I just wouldn't even consider. We don't know if the car has been in a crash. Uh, and for 300 quid, uh, there's just something that I wouldn't be buying. Next, we've got a damper, 325 quid. Now, we can see from the design of it, it's the older level dynamics damper, which has probably got internal valving issues and there's just no damping going on whatsoever. Now, a new damper is 550 quid. You know, the spring separately is about 250 quid and we don't really need that bracket. There's no reason why they break. So again, at 325 quid, if you're buying it for the damper, you'll probably find that this damper is just as worn out as your one and there's only spring damping that's going on because the damper's just lost all of its control. Next we've got this Aston Martin bonnet at 600 quid and you can see it's got a huge dent to the front of it. I mean th that is never going to fill and paint and then be stable. Always going to see sink 
of the paint and lacquer in that fill area. That's just never really going to work out robustly for anyone. Next, we've got this brake caliper at £200. Well, they're only about £300 brand new. And you can see from where the mounting pins are that this caliper has been absolutely butchered. And we don't know whether the seals are any good. So at £200 for a second-hand caliper, this is just totally overpriced and you're better off buying a new one. Next, we have an Aston Martin infotainment center stack. And the main reason that people need these is because you need the module because your infotainment module has failed. And unfortunately, from Aston, an infotainment module comes attached to a new center stack. So why is that center stack out of the car? Okay, it could be from a crashed car. And if you can see that the car is crashed, then you're probably more reassured that the infotainment module is okay, rather than this center stack being outside of the car because it's got an infotainment module problem. Next reason these go would be for the AM FM stereo module. Again, you don't know if that's any good. It is okay for the fascia. Some people need the, the fascia. Maybe there's been some sort of damage in the car occur and it'd be okay for those reasons. But if you were gonna buy this because you were in need of the infotainment module, then that's quite a risky bet. Next, we've got these Bilstein dampers for sale. Well, first off, they haven't got any springs on them and you can't buy the Bilstein springs separate from the damper. So these dampers are pretty much uh, worthless. But some people don't understand these intricacies, think their older level Dynamics dampers will bolt onto these Bilstein dampers and then find out it doesn't when the car doesn't sit at the right ride height. Next, we've got rear lamps. Well, you know, everyone knows the uh, unreliability of the LEDs in the rear lamps and uh, buying a pair of lamps without being able to plug them in and test all functions is quite risky. When you get these lamps out the box, they're probably going to be just as broken as the ones you're taking off the car. Next up, we've got this diff. Yeah, this is out of a DBS. Uh, that diff unit on DBS, which bolts to the ZF Auto Trans, what you can see there retails new from the factory at £9,700. But these diffs were renowned for whining when brand new. So you've got no idea if this is an old warranty return diff that is going to whine more than the diff you're taking out of the car. You've also really got no idea of crown wheel and pinion wear. There could be some serious issues that you only find out about when you bolt the diff to the car. Next up, we've got a V8 Vantage transmission control unit. Now these go quite regularly. When they fail in car, it's the erasable programmable read-only memory side that goes, so it won't learn a new clutch adaption. So it won't take those values which are read from the car and work in conjunction with the software that's programmed in the module how to shift gear. When you get one of these, really what you want to do is plug it into the car, reflash it, will it accept the flash? and then do its first clutch learn that should take a minute and a half, and then look to see if all the clutch adaptions have taken place, run it through a gear position learn, check it learns all the gear positions. And finally, at the end of that stage, you can determine whether the module is 100% fault free or not. I mean, this is about 50 quid short of a new module. So all of that risk for 600 quid, then it's just not worth risking buying that module. And lastly, we'll come on to engines. Now here's a 2015 V12 Vantage engine, complete with wiring loom going for 10,200 pounds. Well, remanufactured engines which was block and heads okay there's no ancillaries they go for about eleven and a half thousand pounds from the factory but at least you know you've got a remanufactured engine it's showing 12 pictures there and if we just scroll through to this picture 
we can see that someone has written some X's on the catalysts. So I'd have a guess that this engine was taken out at dealer and they've put a complete replacement unit in which comes with inlet manifolds, wiring loom, meaning that someone didn't have to take all of those dress items off the old engine and rebuild it to the new engine. And the reason that the engine failed would be because the catalyst has failed on that side. Else why would someone write X's on the catalyst? Now, if the catalyst has failed and if the engine has been taken out of the car by a dealer and replaced with a new engine for catalyst failure, then £10,200 is completely the wrong price because you could end up with an engine which has so much liner damage that by the time you made it round and you'd honed it, was well above a grade three piston. If that's the case, then the block is throw away or you have to rebuild it with aftermarket parts. So 10,200 pounds for that motor. It's a gamble if you buy it at 4,000 pounds, but you know, 10,000 pounds is completely off the mark. Now we've got a 2011 Rapide engine going for 12,000 pounds. I mean, if we scroll through to the description, we can find out that it's done 68,000 mile. So really that engine needs a refresh. So you're buying the engine at 12,000 pounds to give it a refresh, which is probably gonna cost in the region of about six or 7,000 pounds. If it just needed a straight refresh, rings, bearings, gasket seals, hydraulic lash adjusters, that sort of thing. And nothing fundamental like a piston and a liner. Then again, 12,000 pounds plus, what you'll inevitably have to spend on it to get it uh, rebuilt is a far too high price. So there we have it. You know, if you can identify from the advert that mechanically the part is okay and distinguish from the pictures that it's gonna actually function for you, then it's perfectly okay to buy the second hand part, especially if it is a cost save over the eye-watering parts prices from Aston Martin. Otherwise, if there's any chance that from the pictures, you cannot guarantee that it's gonna work for you, then I'd leave it well alone. Buy the new part, get the 12 months warranty. Hope you like that question of the week. As ever, helps us if you can subscribe to our channel click us a like and let's hear your stories on buying second-hand parts. We'll see you on the next question of the week.